Hello and welcome back. I am super excited to bring you a review of this brand new microphone. This is the Shure MV7. It's been inspired by the iconic Shure SM7B. That's the broadcast mic you see everywhere in radio stations. It's the one used by thousands of podcasters, gamers, streamers and voiceover artists. So what's the big deal? Well, this MV7 mic has some of the elements which make the Shure SM7B so popular, but adds a new twist because it combines an XLR output with a USB output. So you can connect this mic directly to your Mac, your PC, your Android phone, or your iPad or iPhone. It's also got a headphone port so you can monitor your recordings directly through the mic. You don't need any other equipment to record with it. And that makes it so much more affordable, accessible and dead easy to use. It's just been launched and as of October 2020, it's priced at $249 in the US, £255 in the UK. Now compare that with the SM7B, which is currently £385 in the UK and also requires you to have a ton of additional equipment. Obviously at this price point it's not simply a USB version of the SM7B but you can see that Shaw is aiming this at a whole bunch of people who want a dynamic broadcast mic like the SM7B but it's way above their price point or it's just too technical to set up and use. This is a much more entry level product. Before I get into the detail I should point out that Shaw sent me this microphone free of charge to review but everything I talk about here is my honest opinion warts and all. And by the way I post regular videos like this on home studio recording especially aimed at newbies so if that sounds like you do subscribe so that you can be the first to get my home recording hints, tips and tutorials. And if you like the video, do give it a thumbs up. OK, let's crack on and see what you can do with the Shure MV7. So if we start with what's in the box, you get the microphone, obviously, and it feels really solid. It has a robust metal casing and large windscreen. It's on a yoke, again, made of sturdy metal, and that fits to a microphone stand. I've got it set up like this, but you can also fit it onto an overhead boom stand if you have one of those. Either way, you'll obviously need some kind of microphone stand with it. The yoke has a standard screw thread, and there is also an adapter should you need it for your stand. If I just pull off the windscreen, you can see what the mic looks like underneath. It does feel very solid and well built. You also get a quick start guide and two cables, a USB-C cable and a standard USB-A cable. Both are three meters in length, which is an improvement on the one meter cables that ship with the other Shure mics I've tried. A couple of things to say on the cables. I've seen a few gasps of dismay that even though this microphone comes with a USB-C cable, the USB port on the mic is an old school micro USB. And it's also worth saying something here about the compatibility of this microphone. If you want to use the MV7 with any iOS device that has a lightning port, so your iPhone or your lightning iPad, you will need to buy the lightning cable as a separate accessory as there is not one in the box. I happen to have one, so I tested it with my Lightning iPad and it worked really well. I also tried connecting my iPad using the USB lead and a USB adapter. And although the mic worked as an external mic, the Shure Motive app wouldn't recognize it. And so I couldn't access all the extra functionality of the app. And as you'll see shortly, the app is really important when you're using this in USB mode. Another thing to note here while talking about compatibility, the USB-C lead worked brilliantly on my Windows laptop and also on my Android phone, and I will give a quick demo of that shortly. However, if you check on the Shure site, the MV7 is not compatible with USB-C iPads. So if you're new to different microphone types, this is a cardioid dynamic mic, which means it's very directional and also not too sensitive. So you can speak close to it like this and you'll find that if you go further and further away, then it's picking up less and less of your voice. Okay, if I come back up close, but I turn it to one side, speak into it like that, or I turn it right round and speak to the back of it, 
because it is very forgiving. So if you had a condenser mic, it would be much more sensitive. It picks up much more of the ambient sound in the room and any background noise. This is much more focused on what is right in front of it, which makes it a much easier mic to use in a variety of different spaces. I'm recording with it right now via the USB output directly onto my MacBook so you can hear how it sounds. And at the same time, I'm taking an XLR feed into my Zoom portable recorder. So a bit later on, I can cut in and you can hear how the XLR recording sounds. Now, throughout most of this video, I'm recording using a fairly neutral setting that I'll show you in detail when we look around the Motive app. I will not be doing any post-processing. So what you hear is what the mic sounds like. Now, this microphone has been very much optimized for vocal use, i.e. for podcasting, gaming, voiceovers, and also for singing. Unlike the Shure SM7B, which can be used on a much wider range of applications like recording guitar cabs, drums, rap and rock vocals, that sort of thing. This is aimed very much at a very specific set of tasks. So very much a vocal mic. Now, if we take a close look at the microphone, you'll see that on the base, you have the USB port, the headphone port, and also the XLR output. I'll come back to the XLR port later. I'm going to start with all the functionality you get in USB mode. You can adjust the levels of the headphone port and the microphone gain directly on the mic. You toggle between the two levels here. There's green dots for microphone gain, orange dots for headphone volume. If you hold for two seconds, you can access the monitor mix, which allows you to decide how much computer playback and how much direct monitoring of the microphone you hear through the headphones. There's also a button to mute the mic, which is really useful as once you have this connected, you'll probably use it as your computer audio output. And so you won't want the mic picking up your voice all the time when you just want to listen to stuff. Or you may wish to mute on and off while you're creating a podcast or back chatting to someone while streaming. Now, if you hold the mute button in, you'll also exit the auto level mode and revert back to manual mode. And this will make more sense in a minute when we look at the Shure Motive app. In USB mode, it's a plug and play device. I just plugged it into a USB port on my MacBook, selected it as the recording device and boom, it was ready to go. It also plugged and played seamlessly via USB-C to my Android phone and to my Windows laptop and with the optional lightning cable to my iPad. Now, to get the most from the MV7 in USB mode, you do need to download the Shure Motive software. There's a desktop utility available for Mac and PC, and there's also an iOS and an Android app. I'll show you on my desktop what the app can do. The app on Android and iOS has exactly the same functionality, but it also has a built-in recording function. So I've mentioned the app a lot. Let's go and examine what it does. So here we have the Shure Plus Motive app set up side by side with my recording software where I'm recording the signal as I speak. So at the moment I have got this microphone on manual setting and in the manual setting you have a little bit more control over the individual aspects of the microphone. I've got a preset set up here which is the settings that I've been using throughout this video. So what you can do within the manual mode is you can choose to mute the mic. Then you have got manual control over the gain on the mic. So you can turn it right down or you can turn it right up. But I found that at 30 dB is about right. You've got control over the monitor mix that we looked at on the mic. So you can control whether you entirely hear direct monitoring of the mic and no computer playback or 100% computer playback. I can no longer hear the mic now or somewhere in between with a mix. Then you can control the EQ. You've got four presets. You've got the neutral EQ, which I've got set at the moment. You can choose this one, which is a bit of a high pass filter. So that will take out some of the lower end of your voice. You've then got a presence boost, which will boost some of the mid tones of your voice, but otherwise quite neutral. And then you have got a combination of the high pass and the presence boost there. So that attenuates the lower frequencies and boosts the mid level. So if I go back to the neutral EQ, 
You've also got a limiter. Now this is a post conversion digital limiter, so it's not really working the same as an analog limiter would do, but it will attenuate your signal a bit if you shout at the mic or there are sudden noises. So that's what the limiter would do. If I turn it off and then shout again, you might hear a difference. Okay, so that's the limiter. And then I've got the compression set on light. You can turn the compression off completely or you can apply a bit of light compression. The more compression that you apply, the louder the overall signal will be. So that's medium compression. And then we're now on the heavy compression. So back to light. So these are the fairly neutral settings I have been using. Now, if you wanted to just use this mic out of the box and not play much with these signals at all, then you can sort of set the mic and forget it. So I've just switched to the auto level. Now, when you're on auto level, you no longer have any control yourself over the gain of the mic. So if you look at the microphone, the alternate LEDs are lit to show you that it's in that state. So auto level, you don't manually adjust the gain on the mic. And then you have still got control to mute the mic unmuted. Okay, you've still got the monitor mix as before. You also have a choice between two settings for microphone position. So at the moment I've got this set because I'm about six inches from the mic, I've got it on the near setting. Now if I wanted to step back a bit from the mic, let's move myself back, you can hear that the signal is a lot lower and if you want the mic to be a bit further away from you like this, then put it on the far setting and it will immediately boost the signal on the mic to allow for that. So you can have two different kinds of positioning for the mic. So moving back to near and then finally you have three tone settings. Now this is the natural tone. You could choose to have a darker tone where it would bring out the depth of your voice like this or you could go for a bright radio level tone like this where it accentuates the uh, presence in your voice and uh, takes out some of that low signal. So let's go back to the natural. And that is all the things you can do in the app. One more thing, if you have been using the auto level and you haven't actually got the app going in front of you, you've just got the mic going and you want to change so that you can have access to the gain controls of the mic, then remember that you can hold in the mic mute button, which is this one here. And if I hold that in for a couple of seconds, it switches to manual mode, as you would just have seen on the software. And once you've done that, you then have control of the gain of the mic actually on the mic itself, which might be quite useful. But that is a one way ticket. Once you have pressed the mute button in and switched to manual mode, you can't then press it again to go back to auto level mode. It will remain in manual mode, but you'll remain having control over the mic gain. Now I'm going to just show you very quickly how the MV7 looks and sounds connected via USB-C to my Android phone. So it was super quick to set up this microphone on my Android phone. I simply got the USB-C lead it came with and plugged it into the back of the mic and into my phone. It was plug and play, it didn't have to do much setting up. I then used the Emotive app to adjust the settings so they are the same as I have been using throughout the rest of the video. And then I'm using the Open Camera app which I know allows me to use an external microphone. So very simple. And one of the beauties of this microphone that it is so versatile, you can use it on so many different devices. Perfect mobile recording with a great sound. Okay, now perhaps it's time to talk about the XLR output. This is such a good feature on this microphone and it's what makes it really versatile. I'm going to switch now. So what you're listening to is the XLR recording that I've been making on the Zoom. And I should point out I'm no post-processing. Now you might just start out using the MV7 as a USB mic, but if you ever wanted to upgrade your setup, then you could use it with an audio interface or with any gear like this portable recorder that has an XLR microphone input. It's also fantastic that you can make a USB recording on your computer and at the same time make a backup recording like what I'm doing now. But bear in mind that all the USB functionality that we just looked at, the 
touch panel LED controls on the mic, the various DSP settings in the Motive app do not apply when you're recording via an XLR mic cable. So what you're listening to now is just the pure XLR recording. This is the setup you'd use more if you wanted to record the microphone into a door or other recording devices and then do post-processing on the recording. But having that XLR output gives you the ability to use this in so many more settings than if it were just a USB mic. So it's a really nice feature. So who is this microphone for? Well, with the ability to alter the tone of the microphone, it's perfect for live streaming and vocal applications. The signal coming out of this microphone, I think, is excellent and you can fine tune it. And as you can hear, it's excellent for video voiceovers and perfect for podcasters and gamers. And don't forget, it's also a great microphone for singing, especially if you want to record vocal tracks in less than ideal spaces. As the MV7 is a dynamic mic, it's directional and does not pick up background noise. So it's a much easier mic to use than a condenser where you need to think much more about acoustic treatment of your recording space. Because it is so easy to set up and to adjust the sound in the app and get something that sounds so nice out of the box, it's an excellent microphone for beginners and with that dual format it won't hold you back as you get more experienced. You can use it as a USB mic right now but future proof yourself if you then want to get an audio interface. The fact that you can use it on so many devices without any other equipment makes it really portable and versatile and it is super affordable for that purpose. Thinking about a few of the downsides, I would not buy this mic necessarily if you're purely going to use it as an XLR mic. If you already have an audio interface set up and you're looking for a good XLR microphone, you'd probably get more for your money at this price point. The real beauty of this mic is the versatility and portability and also that it is so easy to use for a first time setup. And the XLR functionality is excellent to use either as a backup recording and it does mean that as your studio setup grows, this microphone will grow with you. Uh, a couple of other negatives, the micro USB port on the mic, either a full size USB or a USB-C would have been a bit better. And then there is the lack of compatibility with USB-C iPads and the need to buy a lightning cable for your iOS devices on top of the mic. And just one more thing to note, you do have to be careful about knocking the stand because it does pick up knocks and bumps. So watch out for that. However, my overall verdict is I really like this microphone and would definitely recommend it. I've tested and reviewed loads of USB mics. In fact, I'll link you below to my bumper USB mic guide where you can compare it directly with all the other mics I've tested. I've done a video review and also uploaded full resolution recordings made with all the mics and I will do the same with this one. In my opinion, this is, this is a little bit of a game changer. The Shure MV7 is standing on the shoulder of giants and it does not disappoint. I do like the way my voice sounds through it, so I will be using it in future for my video voiceovers. Even though I have a range of other microphones to choose from, I really like this one. Now, finally, if you want to know more, then Sure have a fantastic podcast episode on their site. And again, I'll, I'll link you below because you can listen to Sure historian Michael Pettersson talk about the history of the SM7B and how its DNA has made its way into the Sure MV7. It's a really interesting story. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please give it a thumbs up. If not, then sorry about that. If you have any comments or questions, then do post them below. I love to read them. If you want more of my recording tips, tricks and reviews, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.